These stories, although just a sample of many, provide an important platform for discussion about the future direction of Hendra research, biosecurity and vaccine development. Australia and the world's leading minds in the relevant fields are already looking to what's next when it comes to Hendra. As one of the planet's most noteworthy zoonotic diseases, work to combat the Hendra virus is being viewed in an increasingly international context. The important trends in infectious diseases in horses around the world is, is going more from diagnosis and treatment to preventative medicine. Okay, so there's more of a push on the vaccine development and, and vaccine technology. So you've got safe, uh, efficacious vaccines against a range of infectious agents. Although the ultimate aim is to protect the human health, but we have to put human health, animal health together. So the terminology now is one health. So what you want is uh, hopefully in your scientific sort of portfolio, you have people who understand bats and bat ecology and how they host and transmit virus. And you have people who understand the horse, for example, how they behave and vaccination in horses. And you also have people working right in the hospital and to detect the earliest possible of unusual disease events. I think the Hendra virus vaccine is a really good example of, of where the equine infectious diseases research is going. So it, the, the researchers at, at the Australian Animal Health Laboratory and in Queensland are looking at, at the, the epidemiology of the, of the virus out in the field. So in, with Hendra it's you know, epidemiology in bats and how the virus goes from bats to horses. So this is the number one question. Why are they so lethal when they jump from an animal to human? And the second question what we try to understand is that uh, how can this virus peacefully coexist within the bat? We may be able to really make some inroads into understanding how bats can be infected by these viruses yet not get sick. And if we understand those factors, perhaps they'll lead to new ideas for new therapeutics that go beyond vaccines. The Hendra virus story really brings home the importance of fundamental research in answering these questions. We wouldn't have a Hendra virus vaccine if it wasn't for the fundamental research that was able to be carried out at the Australian Animal Health Laboratory and also with their collaborators in North America. We need to get a better understanding of the um, time period over which it's going to be of value to use the antibody treatment in any um, post-exposure situations in people. I think that the second area of research, we make the observation that um, the bat populations are changing in Australia. They're, they're moving uh, around the country. Uh, in particular, the black flying fox is, is uh, starting to um, head further south. This disease is changing. It seems to be uh, heading further south. So the policy needs to reflect some uh, possibility of change down the track. But what we really do know categorically is that the vaccine is very, very effective. And so in the absence of knowledge in other areas, you go to the area that you have good knowledge in, right? And you, you, so and I think it really makes the vaccine much more important. If we had information around some of the other areas, maybe there's other things we can do, but we don't have that information. We really need to use the vaccine. It needs to be in all horses. The really big ticket item we need to get out there is the 12 month duration of protection data. If we're able to confirm that protection persists for at least 12 months after vaccination, that will be a lot of assistance to the industry. The next chapter for Hendra disease in, in our sport, I believe, is a bedding down of, of acceptance of vaccination. It's critically important that uh, given the nature of the disease, uh, it becomes a work health and safety issue with respect to employees in the industry, that they are adequately protected. It's also in the interest of veterinarians when they're called out to make sure that they too are protected. Uh, in addition, you've also got protection of the, the horse owners themselves and their family. So it's important we get as widespread adoption as possible. From the global view, if you like, researchers are looking at which are the virus determinants that are critical for infection. Um, and then looking at dissecting that down and, and, and using those as the basis for new vaccines. So now what I'm trying to do is very sort of ambitious and we are trying to establish International Collaborative Centre for One Health. So what I can see this is in a whole picture is that from human all the way to animal reservoir and how best you know, we can have rapid diagnosis, rapid prevention and if prevention fails then at least we have some way to control the disease outbreak. So, according to the experts, the future of Hendra lies in ongoing work with the horse vaccine. 
a better understanding of why flying foxes are so dangerous when it comes to the virus, and greater acceptance of new biosecurity and prevention measures. In addition to this, as a number of factors in relation to the Hendra virus are yet to be fully understood, the need for increased uptake of the horse vaccine is greater than ever. Bringing this all together means continued collaboration amongst the equine industry and horse owning community. Our joint responsibility is to ensure this work has an impact and makes a difference to the health of our horses and ourselves. While the first 20 years of the Hendra story may be full of grief and sadness and the irreplaceable loss of human and horse lives, the next 20 years looks far brighter. For the first time in a long time, our industry is on the front foot. The scientific community is successfully pushing into new areas of knowledge and veterinarians and horse owners are well armed with the tools they need to prevent Hendra virus. And most importantly, our horses, our friends, our colleagues and our families are safer than ever.